Hey fam, how y'all doing? It's Rick back at you. Uh, sorry I haven't posted a fishing video in a while, but hopefully it'll change in the next few days. But it's been too hot for me and I, I take certain med medications and I can't take the heat. So instead, I've decided to make this little fishing tutorial video to show you some of the things that I do to catch fish. And it's really simple, really simple. God bless you, and uh, let's get into it. <laughs> so first of all, we're going to go with the type of equipment that I like to use. I'm really partial to these ugly sticks that you can get at Walmart. And this is a 6 foot 6 medium action rod. And I got this whole combo, rod and reel. For $44 and that in my estimation is that's a pretty good bargain I get a lot of use out of these reels the, the tips are really sensitive and you can feel even the lightest bite and I love them and they're durable the only thing about them is sometimes I fish a lot of dams and rocks and places like that and I'm really rough on my equipment these reels last me generally about a year and I have to replace them but you can't go wrong Walmart 40 bucks ugly stick a lot of bang for your buck right here also all right and on this one this one is a stampede from Bass Pro Shops it is a seven foot uh, rod and reel combo and I got this for 40 bucks at the Bass Pro Shop. Once again, you don't have to the rod and reel together. Nice combo, 40 bucks. And it's got a warranty. You don't have to spend a lot of money, especially to um, catch a lot of fish. To be successful, you know, fishing started with a cane pole and a stick. <laughs> you don't have to spend a lot of money. But um, yeah, and for the type of fishing that I do, crappies, blue yields, a few catfish here and there, trout, Sauger walleye, that's perfect. All right. All right. I'm going to string both the reels with this vanish, this Berkeley vanish. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not getting paid for any of this. This, this is just the stuff that I like to use that I've been highly successful with. This vanish, and I'm going to put each reel six pound test on each reel and um i can't tell you enough about how good this vanish is it's amazing i fished it side by side with people using the exact same setup as i am and they're not using the vanish and i'm out fishing them sometimes two sometimes three to one per fish especially on the trout this is an amazing stuff the only cons about it is after a few months, it tends to get those curls in them. You know, it won't stay straight. It won't be straight. It'll get those loops in them. But this is an amazing product, and I love it. Six pound test. That's all you need. All right, I'm going to string these up, and we're going to show you the rig we're going to use. Be right back. All right, back. We got the seven foot seven foot pole all lined up and everything. I'm going to show you the rig that I use. It's my all-time favorite rig also. It catches everything. We're going to be using a slip float with a bobber stop. And I'm going to show you guys how to rig it. You can get these at Bass Pro Shop too. These are barber shops, barber, bobber stops, and... I don't know, you guys can't see that. There you go. Bobber stops. And this is how they look. Now each stop has a little hole through the top of the stop. I don't know if you guys can see that. Little hole. There you go. Against the black of my beard. <laughs> All right. I'm going to show you how you do this. You want to take the end of your line and run it through 
run it through that hole on the bobber stop, the end of the bobber stop. Like so. Pull the line through. And in one hand, you're going to hold the stop itself. And in the other hand, this little tab here, you're going to pull the tab like so. And it transfers the stop right onto the line. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You can, you can do this. Trust me, it's super easy. Now, after that... I'm going to take these little red beads and they have a hole in them. And you're going to run the line through the hole in the bead. kind of challenging for a blind guy like me <laughs> when you get older and I'll show you when I get it through there come on man oh my god this is terrible There we go, finally. Now we got the bead. And the bead will go all the way up to the stop and it slides like that. Just like that. All right. Now, the next step is to take the floats. Now, these are slip floats that I buy at Walmart also. These cost, you get three for $1.57. Last year they were like a dollar or so inflation is not too bad 57 cents and um, these are fairly light <clears throat> since I'm excuse me since I'm only fishing crappies and bluegills and trout stuff like that you don't need a heavy float especially if it's not windy but they come in different variety varieties some will have little weights in the bottom that will give you more weight where you can get the line out further but um those are a little bit more expensive. But I'll tell you what I'd like to do to these out of the bag. These come with a, with a, a stopper. I mean a, a guide. And the top, this plastic guide, after a while, when you're catching a few fish, the line tends to cut into this soft plastic part, and it'll hang up. It won't sink. And um, so what I like to do is take some pliers, and I remove that plastic part and now the float is totally hollow. We're gonna run it, through, run the line through I'm going to cut off some of this line because it's a little twisty. Slide the beads up. All right. And there you have it. Easy peasy to float slides. Now, for hooks, I use two different types. I use these Aberdeen number fours for bluegills. Number four, once again, Walmart. Long shank gold Aberdeen number fours for bluegill. We're going to rig one for bluegills, and we're going to rig the other one for crappies, uh, trout, whatever. And I use the Aberdeen number twos, the number twos for those. Same, just a different size. Number two, once again, Walmart, very inexpensive, like $3.50.
and Longshank Aberdeen. And since this one, the seven foot pole will be the crappie pole, I'm going to go ahead and tie this on. I want to, I'll show you the knot that I used for that. I also use this for soccer too. So you go through just a simple Palomar knot. And it's very easy to tie. What I like to do is this knot, I'll tell you, go around five times. One, two, three, four, five. And once you go around five times, you come back down here and go back through the through the loop. Hold on. This is gonna be tough because this, this vanish really does vanish. It's hard to see. Come on, vanish. Alright, I think I got it. No, I did not. Mm-hmm. Got it that time. Now, when you bring it through, you're gonna hold it like this and wet it. Hold the tag that you brought through and then pull. And that is, oh, it didn't work. I gotta do it over. Do that over and we're gonna do it right this time. It's gonna work this time. <laughs> Man, oh man. One, two, three, four, five. Some people use three. I've seen people use ten. Bring it through the loop, through the hole. All right, is that through? Wet it up. Pull it. Got it that time. Yeah. All right. Now, and there we go. Slip float hooks. Now, we're going to put some weights on. Give me one second. And I'm going to show you the advantages of using this rig, especially for the waters in Middle Tennessee. These are number seven split shots. Number seven. I'm going to start off with three. Usually I use start off with two, but where I'm fishing is going to have a little current, so we're going to go with three. And I want to put those on and they just open like this and you put the line in between in that gap I just bite it mm -hmm. put another one missed it Slide them up. Now here's the trick, and this is what I do. So you got your weights, right? When I'm fishing crappies and bluegills and trout and that sort of thing, I don't want the weights down here by the hook. So I've got them at least a foot away from the hook. So when I put that bait on, It'll float 
especially a minnow will swim with all this line beneath that weight and that makes it more enticing to any fish that's gonna gonna look at it once you get the weights on take your pliers and squeeze them down and there's the setup right there slip float weights right there hook one last thing you see this long piece right here it's called a tag. You don't want it that long. Cut it to about right there. And the reason I don't have it that long is because when these fish swallow these hooks, sometimes they'll swallow them entirely. If they feel that tag brushing up against the roof of their mouth, they'll spit it out. So you want it to be as natural and as appealing as possible. So when I put that cricket or that minnow on there and it's beneath this vanish, they don't even see this. I'm going to show you the advantages of fishing with a slip float. So, you got your rig, right? Now, I've got my bead right here. So I'm only fishing this deep. But I can slide the bead up, the bobber stop, all the way up to here. Now when I throw it out, I'm fishing about two and a half, three feet deep this float will slide up to that stop. Now I'm fishing that deep. That way I can target the fish, especially if they move up and down during the day. Sometimes they're shallow, sometimes they're deep. And I can actually slide that stop all the way down to about right here. And that'll give me at least 10 feet fishing below a float, 10 feet, 11 feet down in the water, which is excellent. If I have to go any deeper than that to get the fish, I'll actually switch over to a bottom rig. And uh, that's it. I'm going to do the six foot pole. And um, we'll go over that just one more time to show you how it's done. And I'll be right back. All right. We got the six foot six ugly stick rigged up. And that's going to be our bluegill pole. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through that process one more time exact same process oh, this line is so thin run the line through the hole through that loop right there Pull it through like so. Hold the stop and hold the thumb tab and pull. Boom. And now the stop transfers right onto the line. Now I didn't want to mention one thing. This is the only thing that I can't find. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies. This is the only thing that I can't find at Walmart. You have to buy these at bait shops or Bass Pro Shops. And a Bass Pro Shop is kind of expensive for these. But these also, on the package, they'll say what size line that they're recommended for. Uh, four to six pound test, six to eight pound test, 10 to 20 pound test, that sort of thing. But these things are amazing right here. I love them. All right. Let's get back to business. Next, you go with a bead. These beads come in different sizes too. If you're fishing bluegills and crappie, you just need the smaller bead. If you're gonna use slip floats for catfish, uh, striper, hybrid stripers, and you're gonna use a, a larger diameter line, then definitely get the, uh, the larger beads. Once again, gonna run it through. The hole in the bead. And slide the bead on like so. 
Next. I'm gonna stick with Ready Red, Slip Float, Super Hollow, this is just Styrofoam. And once again, you can use these, but after you catch a few fish, the drag and the line's gonna cut a groove into this little plastic and your line will hang up on it. So, draw two pliers and just remove it. That's it, slide it on. Yeah, just a little curved. It's new. What's going on here? That's crazy. One more time, still has a little nip in it. Come on, float, what's going on? They gave me a defective float. <laughs> Give me a second, this should go right through. second guys all right we're back something about that float is defective I got to stick a knife in there and hollow it out a little more but hey it's out of China <laughs> Walmart so there you go and a dollar so you get what you pay for but once again you got the float on she it slides I'm gonna stop right at that bead for the bluegills, we're gonna go with these number two, Eagle Claw Aberdeen. Actually, that's wrong. That's wrong, those are for the crappie. For the bluegills, we're gonna go with these number fours. Sorry, I got crappie on the brain. Same routine. A Palomar knot. One, two, three, four, five. And then back through the loop, which is extremely hard to see. <laughs> Wet it up and voila, you see that tag? See that tag? I'm gonna cut that down once again, like I said, to about right there. Sevens. Same routine. One. Two. Three. 
down. See how far that is from the hook? Like I said, I want it a little further. Even with the bluegills. A little further. And the reason being, when these weights are sitting in the water, that cricket or that worm will move back and forth with the current. It'll look more natural and um, it'll be, it works. That's how I like to do it. Go ahead, take your pliers, tighten them down. All right. After that, and that's it. I'm going to set the bead up about this deep. All right. And we'll adjust the depth as needed. <laughs> so that's it. Really simple rig that you can use to catch almost any species with live bait. Um, very simple to learn. Very simple to do. Um, once again, I'm going to take these poles. I'm going to take a bucket of crickets and a bucket of minnows. I got a spot picked out and I'm going to make it do what it do. <laughs> if you like this video, like and subscribe. This is the first video I've ever said that, but like and subscribe. I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers, guys. But uh, if you like the video, like and subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, my channel's not monetized, but I want to get that plaque from YouTube. Also, um, God bless you and your families. Thanks for watching. I love y'all, and y'all have a good weekend.